You won't believe Kawasaki's vision of future transportation. No, I'm not talking about autonomous cars or drones. Prepare yourself for something unlike anything you've ever seen before. Plus, think you're smart? Stick around for our new quiz segment, Smart Bite, and test your knowledge of automation. And what looks like half machine, half mammal, is actually all beast. Kawasaki Heavy Industries has unveiled Corleo, a hydrogen-powered four-legged rideable robot. Inspired by agile animals like wolves and mountain goats, Corleo is designed as an all-terrain alternative to motorcycles. It climbs mountains, traverses through waterways, leaps over ravines, and takes your kid on serene nature walks. What's really cool about Corleo is that it's powered by hydrogen energy. Its limbs are powered by electricity generated from a hydrogen fuel cell paired with a 150cc engine. You might expect Corleo to lose footing while scaling rocky mountainsides, but its independently moving legs allow it to navigate rough, uneven terrain with ease. Corleo also features terrain adaptive hooves. These split rubber hooves resemble those of mountain goats and provide traction and stability on diverse surfaces such as grasslands and rocky paths. Its streamlined body is robust and built from carbon and metal materials for strength and agility. Corleo is also rider responsive, adjusting the body movements to support balance. And riders keep informed with a HUD that shows key system data like navigation, hydrogen levels, and weight distribution. Corleo represents Kawasaki's vision for clean energy and future mobility. But if you want to saddle one up, you'll have to wait until about 2050 when a legitimate version is released. But there's no longer any wait for our premier product highlight, sponsored by Mauser Electronics. The XTEC 461-950 is a 1 8 DIN panel mount tachometer designed to measure rotational speeds from 5 to 99,990 RPM with 0.05% accuracy. It supports both proximity and photoelectric sensors, both with 6-foot cables. It features a bright 4-digit LED display with a 1-second update rate. This unit operates on 110 or 220 volts AC and fits standard panel cutouts. Rugged, reliable, and easy to install, the XTEC 461-950 is ideal for motors, fans, gears, and is perfect for continuous speed monitoring and industrial environments. Check out the XTEC 461-950 today by visiting mauser.com or clicking the link below. Understanding electronic pressure switches unlocks smarter control, greater efficiency, and insight into the heartbeat of automated systems. To learn more, we present David's Corner. Thanks, Andy. Pneumatic components are used everywhere in industrial automation. We have actuators, we have vacuum adapters. If you've ever walked around any sort of a trade show or really any shop floor that has robots or motion of any kind, you're probably gonna see some sort of pneumatic actuation happening. But instead of just sending control signals to valves, turning them on and off, and hoping that things are working, we have a few ways of being able to sense whether the pressure is actually doing its job as the air is flowing through the pipes. And now one of them is to put position sensors on all the actuators. So if I have this little robot gripper, then I can put a position sensor, a very sensitive one, to see if it indeed picked up the component like it was supposed to. This is great unless the robot happens to be picking up differently sized objects. Or, what if the robot is using a vacuum adapter and picking up objects by use of the vacuum? That's not really a position that I can measure. So instead, we use these devices called pressure switches. They're a kind of sensor that just senses the pressure in a branch or in a part of a pneumatic system. When we supply power in, in, in the form of air and the air is moving, the pressure will be lower. As soon as the air stops moving and fills up the chamber, like when an actuator or a rod hits the end of the stroke, it, the pressure in the whole system in that branch will increase. Our pressure switch is able to detect that change in pressure and know that that cylinder has reached its goal position. This is great when we might need to be picking up different sized objects and we'll be reaching the end of the motion at a different point each time where we can't detect that with discrete sensors. These pressure switches can send a signal to a control system that says, sure enough, 
that actuator or that robot gripper has accomplished the job that it was supposed to accomplish and we can move to the next step of the control system. This pressure switch takes us from what we call open loop control, which is where we send a signal and hope that things are happening, into closed loop control with feedback that says we sent the control and it did the basic function it was supposed to do and now we can progress to the rest of a successful control system. Andy, back to you. Thank you, David. You know, we always like to keep our audience educated on the edge, and today we're introducing a new segment called Smart Byte. In Smart Byte, we test your knowledge on various control automation trivia. Let's give it a go with a multiple choice question on PID controllers. Here's the question. What is the effect of increasing the derivative time in a PID controller? Is it A, reduces overshoot and improves stability, or B, increases steady state error. If you said B, increases steady state error, you are mistaken. The answer is A, reduces overshoot and improves stability. Increasing the derivative time in a PID controller helps reduce overshoot and improve stability by damping rapid changes in error, leading to a smoother, more controlled response. If you didn't get it this time, no worries. Tune in next week for another try and be sure to click the link on your screen for everything control automation and we'll see you next time.